I pray and I hope that you are all flourishing. I am super excited to be here. And I hope and believe you are as excited as I am. I'm still struggling to see some of you hands. I'm looking around. I don't know if it's our network or connection, but I can see Sandra. God bless you, Sandra. It's good to see you. I can see Juvenal. God bless you, Juvenal. It's good to see you. I'm super excited to be here. I want us to take a uh, few minutes, or rather a few seconds in prayer. We have already prayed. We have been in prayer with the team just before eight. We started praying and we have been praying for you and we have been praying for this service. So I want you to join us right now wherever you are. Take 30 seconds of your time in the Holy Ghost and begin to speak and begin to pray for this very moment. I always say that the Word of God is like a seed. The seed is the same, but now what determines the results is the ground, the ground that the seed will fall on. So your heart is like, a, it's like, it's like soil, so to say, the ground. So you need to pray that God, my heart is receptive. Amen. And I want you to say it out loud to say, I am ready, God, to receive your word. So I want you to go and pray. Stand against anything that causes you to misunderstand the word mishandle the word and misjudge the word of God. Amen. So lift up your voice wherever you are in the Holy Ghost and begin to pray right now. Jalida roshkete vehense manta kiro shataka prande pira tu shataka paya. Mere heve hens eve hens kinin toko vro shataka bande le hende heve hasuva. Min toko jabranta la has eve hinta kila bro shataka paya. Melene menze vedish kataya brandole vehesa dija angla hasa taki vahaya. Rab. in singing this song as we sing it and we continue some of you you'll hear sounds and you'll hear voices let's sing let's sing let's sing let's sing oh, yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. I so. 
Go ahead and wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. It's better now. I can see you. I am excited. I don't know what had happened to our beloved sister. I believe she had connected to a wrong network, but we are all back here. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Good to see Tamari and family. Good to see Kiran. Hey, Kiran. I know you are flourishing. Lydia, God bless you. I have Asa. I believe that's how you pronounce it, right? Because it's A-S-A-H, Asa. We have Tsepo. For the very first time, we are able to see Tsepo today. We usually see his picture. God is good. Munitao, God bless you. Daughter of the Iron Man, God bless you. God bless you, Jobsu. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. Musa, I see you. I see everybody who's waving their hands. There is no reason for you not to be excited as long as you are here. There is no reason for you not to be excited. You have to be excited. You better be excited. Say with me, I am excited. I am excited. And if you are excited, give me a J. J. Give me a E. e. Give me a S. S. Give me a U. You. Give me an S. S. What do you have? Jesus. You are excited. You are excited. There is power in the name of? Jesus. There is healing in the name of? Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of? Jesus. There is restoration in the name of? Jesus. Miracles in the name of? Jesus. Marriages in the name of? Jesus. Jobs in the name of? Jesus. I don't have people here. I don't have people here. I said there is power in the name of Jesus. Houses in the name of Jesus. Cars in the name of Jesus. Businesses in the name of Jesus. Restitution in the name of Jesus. Grace in the name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. And say that's my boss. That's my boss. And I pray that his face will shine upon your face. That, so. that everywhere you go, they won't just see you, but they will see the Jesus that lives inside you. So. I believe that God has a word for somebody today. I'm not going to be long, I promise you that. Uh, usually I take my time and I'm not apologetic when it comes to that. But today I'm not going to be long. And the reason being is because this message is to lead us to another message. Amen. This is not the actual message, to be honest with you. The actual message is coming next week. Amen. But however, this is a foundation of the actual and to the actual message. Amen. If you remember, this series started with the return of the Nephilim. And we went deeper into dealing with the return of the aliens, mm. the giants, and the hybrids. Oh, yes, oh, yes. We then went to rapture. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And after rapture, we then dealt with one more sign, or rather the last sign before rapture. Amen. We then went and left Rad, and we went to the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Revelation, we dealt with the river Euphrates. Amen. And we touched, you know, uh, just a little bit on the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to talk about the mark of the beast versus the mark of Christ. Mm -hmm. However, the mark of Christ is the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. That's why the Bible says we have been sealed. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And then the following, the, the other week, we're supposed to deal with the mark of the beast uh, versus the mark of Christ. Then the Holy Ghost took us to another world and we dealt with what does it mean to be a Christian. Amen. We then left that, dealt with uh, what does it mean to have the Holy Spirit. Or rather what it means to have the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Ghost came again and we dealt with the Holy Ghost baptism. Where we were now talking about who he is. Moving from what it means to have him into who he is. And of course, we then last week dealt with the mystery of the blood of Jesus. Amen. 
and uh, trust me, many of you were offended. <laughs> but thank God, after you went and you watched it again, God dealt with that offense. Yes. And you realize that this is not just a mere talk. Yes. And this is not just wisdom from men. Oh, yes. But this is the word of God. Amen. This is logos transforming into rema. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So today I want us to talk about the mathematics of grace. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I thought church was excited today, but I can see I'm on my own right here. I can tell I'm on my own. If you're watching on YouTube, quickly share this and let somebody know that we are live. If you're watching on YouTube, share this and let it get to as many people as possible. I know we can do better. On YouTube, I have Sisyphewe, I have Echo, I have uh, Johanny, I believe that's Johan, I, I have Nonkazmulo. I have Pretty Mudise, I have Pamela uh, Peterson, I have Benice Alali, I have Sandile Mabuza saying I'm here major. Uh, I have Mr. Mind Key E, um, I have Davis as well. Listen, I have Bosi, I have Edith, I have Novuyo, I have Rika, I have so many people that are in here, and I believe we can copy this link and put it on our social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, even on WhatsApp, and let those that follow us uh, 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 tune in as well and connect to this grace. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's get this started with because I don't want to waste too much of your time, and I certainly don't want to waste my time. Lift up your Bible up high and let's flow. If you don't have your Bible, lift up your right hand. Please, if you're driving, just keep on driving. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe. I believe. It contains the word of God. It contains the word of God. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. I will do what it says I will do. Today I will be taught the word of God. Today I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive to receive the incorruptible word of God. To receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life, and my life shall, never, shall never ever, ever be, the same again. be the same again. Say glory, somebody. Glory. Are you guys ready for the word? Oh, yes. Say, give me the word, Apostle. Give me the word, Apostle. What is important is understanding. Amen. It does not matter how many times you hear about it. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand, you will never walk in its reality. Amen. Let me say that again. I've started preaching. Amen. So if you're waiting for another sermon, please don't wait. This is the sermon. Yes. What matters is not how many times you have heard about it. Mm -hmm. What matters is how you understand it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Amen. Because until you understand it, you will never walk in its reality. It does not matter what it is. <laughs> Normally people will say information is power. But that's half of the truth. Because there are people who have the information. Yet powerless. So what makes a person a superpower is understanding. That's why the wisest man said this. He said wisdom. It's a principal thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, get wisdom. Yes, sir. He then said, wait a minute. But in all thy getting, mm -hmm. get understanding. Amen. And why is that? Because wisdom is not wisdom without understanding. Mm -hmm. yes. I said this and I'm going to say it again. 
And please hear me in the Holy Ghost. Wisdom is application. This is where you are applying that which you understand. Meaning wisdom is never wisdom without understanding. Let me break it down. You know, when you deal with wisdom, wisdom has siblings. And two of his siblings are, of course, people who liken wisdom to her, but allow me to liken wisdom to him, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. And that is because of Sophia, the wisdom of God. That is because of phronesis, right? So allow me to liken wisdom to him, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. If wisdom was a person, Solomon would be wisdom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now watch this. Wisdom has siblings. And two of his siblings are knowledge and understanding. As a matter of fact, these three are triplets. And that is because in order for you to have understanding, you must have knowledge. In order for you to have wisdom, you must have understanding. Why? Because wisdom is application. Mm -hmm. Understanding is comprehension. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is information. Mm -hmm. So when the information comes, I comprehend it. Mm -hmm. Then I apply it. Yes, so this is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why it is very, very important for you not just to hear, but for you to understand. Amen. That's why scripture in the book of Jeremiah says, I will give you shepherds. Mm -hmm. And of course, your new uh, translations these days, uh, they say, I will give you pastors. Mm -hmm. Yet the actual translation actually says, I will give you teachers mm -hmm. who will feed you with understanding. Mm -hmm. Notice if you may, it does not say who will feed you with information. But he will, they will feed you with understanding. The reason why people don't experience spiritual growth is because they hear but they don't understand. They see but they don't perceive. So hence they are not growing spiritually. You find believers praying today for spiritual growth and you wonder what kind of madness is this? How can one really pray for spiritual growth? If spiritual growth was something that we prayed for or we can pray for, all of us will have prayed for it. Come on now. Come on now. Say go deeper, Apostle. You see, the, 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 the difference between spiritual growth, right, and your normal growth, which is your biological or natural growth, is that when it comes to the spiritual side of it, what you know determines your growth. Mm -hmm. Yet on the physical side, time will force you to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me put it this way. Have you seen a mother praying for the teeth of their one-year-old baby to come out? No. They don't pray for that. Mm -hmm. It's because they know that for the teeth to come out, it is just a matter of time. Sir. It will be ignorance for them to pray. Let the teeth come out. Let the teeth come out. Yet the baby was born yesterday. What is that? That is stupidity and ignorance. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. But because they understand that time now will bring forth that teeth. Yes, sir. Whether the baby boy, the baby girl wants it or not. Yes, when time comes, everything is subject to time in the realm of men. Even you right now, who, does, who doesn't want to grow? Time will say you are growing in can, meaning by force. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we don't want to grow old, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But time is fighting us. Mm -hmm. When I look right now and I check and I find out that, like now when I check, I have three sons. It fascinates me. Mm -hmm. One time, I was looking at pictures of, you know, DK, my firstborn, and I was like, he was a baby. Now he has a base when he talks. Amen. And I'm like, what is this? Time. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the spiritual side of things, 
You don't wait and then you grow. So what you take in causes your growth. That's why Paul comes and he rebukes those who are still taking on milk. He said, when I came back, I thought by now you'll be taking on solid food. As a matter of fact, I love it because in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says, he says meat. So even in what you take, there are dimensions. So there is milk, there is meat, and there is solid food. So just because you are taking on milk, it does not mean you are matured. Just because you are taking on meat, it doesn't mean you are matured. The full matured ones take on solid food. I don't know if they're hearing me. I don't know. I don't know if they're hearing me. Listen, let's do this. If they are not hearing me, let me minister to you here. So, okay, I, I, think, I think they're getting it. I think, I think on Zoom they're getting it. I think, I don't know. If on YouTube you are still here, put fire emojis. We are left with 25 minutes. Put fire emojis. I want to see fire emojis everywhere. Hallelujah. People don't understand why fire emojis because Hebrews 12, 29 says what? Our God is a consuming fire. So fire is the nature of God. Amen. Don't you tell people not to shout fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, <laughs> so it is very important for you to go after understanding. Because what you know in the spirit determines how far you can go. You can't go to the gym right now, Brother Peter, and start speaking in tongues. I'm fit. I'm fit. I'm fit. I'm muscular. No. You have to lift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. So even when it comes to the spiritual matters, spiritual side of things, you don't go, I'm, I'm mature. <laughs> That's why whenever God calls a man, regardless of the gift that God has put in a man, God will call it a man. Meaning God will what? Train a man. Yes, and then God will commission a man. Yes, God does not commission a man before he colleges a man, Brother Brian. Yes, Even Moses, as great as he was, mm -hmm. he was with Jethro the priest. Mm -hmm. And he sat under the leadership, mm -hmm. submitted under the leadership of Jethro. Yes, That's why we always say submission is not a sign of weakness. Yes, but submission is a sign of strength under control. Yes, Submission is a womb of maturity. As great as Paul was. Guess what? Paul was told what to do by Ananias. Yet we have never read any book written by Ananias. Yet Ananias told the greatest apostle of all time what to do. When Paul was still in the church in Antioch, the Bible says, while is the prophets were prophesying, yes, the teachers were teaching, yes, the Holy yes, Ghost sir. said, separate for me Barnabas and Paul. Yes. He does not say, while is we were teaching, meaning he was not part of those who were prophesying and teaching. Amen. He was taking in. Yes, Brother Peter, he was encoding. Yes, so that when his time comes, he can decode. Yes. You see, the problem is, you want to decode what you did not encode. Yes. When it comes to spiritual matters, Amen. there are things that come by desire. Mm. But desire won't cause you to function in them. Mm. You didn't hear what I just said. Mm. The reason why people say, but I've been desiring to prophesy. How come I can't prophesy? It's because desire does not get you to prophesy. Mm. Desire gets you to the unction. Mm. But for you to function, you need knowledge. Ah, they didn't hear you. They didn't hear it. Ah, they didn't hear it. Ah, I don't know. They will hear it next week. Maybe uh, I think that's Apostle Martin. Apostle Martin Stephen is hearing me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why you should uh, Aphrodite. Today I'm not able to see you because you look like, oh, you're at work. Yes, okay, okay. I understand. Listen, uh, 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 it, is, it, is, it is very, very, very important for all of you here, Amen. no matter the matter, Amen. go after knowledge. Amen. Even if you were to sit down for 10 years to be the best vision of yourself, sit. Sit down. Just to be the best vision of yourself. 
It took Jesus 30 years. Yet he was Theoanthropos from birth. I don't know who God is talking to. God is, God is trying to tell somebody something right here. There is somebody who has been everywhere but no way. Because they are missing this very mark that I'm talking about. There is somebody that by now you are to be some way. And here is your key and your formula to where God wants to take you. Be teachable. Be leadable. So that when God raises you up, you'll be ready to lead others. Because true leadership is carried out by example. If we can't teach you and nobody can teach you, what makes you think you're qualified to teach anybody? Because with God, things are not the same. He says, he who wants to be great, let him serve first. Yes, so if it took Jesus, who was Theoanthropos, 100% man, 100% God, mm -hmm. from birth to build capacity for 30 years, mm -hmm. just to do a ministry that lasted him three years, yes, and then he kissed everybody goodbye. Mm -hmm. Some of us will have opted for three years mm -hmm. so that we can do a ministry that will last for 30 years. You need to differentiate the, 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 you need to know how to put a line between appointment and anointment. Amen. I'm talking here. Oh, Church, yeah. I'm talking. Oh, yeah. Church, I'm talking here. Munitao, you see, once you are anointed, the spiritual part of it is done. Amen. But you will need to be appointed. To start moving in that gift. Oh, yeah. And some people don't understand that appointment comes with experience. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Hey. Appointment comes with your ability to handle pressure. Mm -hmm. Appointment comes with how well you can handle pressure. I don't know if that, that makes sense. I'll give an example. I'll give an example. David is anointed at the age of 15. Yes, sir. He becomes a king at the age of 30. Mm -hmm. So it took him 15 years to become a king. Mm -hmm. But what was the problem? The problem was not anointing. Mm -hmm. He was already anointed. Yes, sir. But he did not say, because I'm anointed, let me go to the palace and sit on the chair. Mm -hmm. God will back me up because God is the one who anointed me. Mm -hmm. And that's how you operate. Mm -hmm. You see that now? Yes, sir. So it took him 15 years to build capacity. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, they are not hearing me. Ah, they are not hearing me. Ah, they are not hearing me today. I think we should close this service. Some of you, it looks as if you are at the backstage of life. It looks as if nobody considers, considers you. It looks as if just because you are cleaning in the church, you are the least of them all. Mm -hmm. Didn't you read the Bible? When it said, he who wants to be great, mm -hmm. let him serve first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you are God's secret weapon. Oh, yes. You oh, yes. are hidden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. When the time comes, like a sword in the hands of a skillful fighter, God will use you. Those that are ahead of you will lift up their heads and realize that you have arrived. And they'll say, but when we left, you had not departed as yet. How come you are here? It's because what will take them six years to build will take you six months. And that is because you have capacity. Look at, look at how they are looking at me. They, some, some they don't read their Bibles. Some they don't read their Bibles. The book of Amos says, the blessings shall overtake you. <laughs> Every time I read that scripture, Amos 9, I laugh. You see, it's one thing when David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Mm -hmm. And when you read Amos and it says, the blessings, you shall fail to keep up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, may it be your portion in the name of Jesus. That's, so. That's 
that's who we are. Amen. The Bible says, and Elijah ran faster than the chariots Amen. of Ahab. Yes, sir. <laughs> what speed is that, Brother Kudan, Reverend Kudan? What speed is that? Can you imagine arriving before those who departed before you? Despise not submission. Isn't it the Bible says despise? Not prophesying. Yes. I'm telling you now, Apostle Me says, despise not submission. Yes. In the kingdom of God, if you can't submit, you become a suspect. Amen. Oh, yes. Not to just people, even to angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will talk about that another time. So today, what are we talking about? I'm left with 10 minutes now. We're talking about the mathematics of grace. Yes, sir. So I want you to understand because we have been coming, you know, I think we, we started like about eight weeks ago, this series, yes, sir. preparing for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember, at any time, rapture can take place. Yes, sir. At any time, the King of glory can come back. Amen. At any time, the last trumpet can sound. Amen. So it is very important that we, we, we find ourselves in the right standing with God. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it is what we know that positions us. Yes. And it is what we know that moves us from where God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Remember, there is, not every information is there to inform you. Mm -hmm. It can be information, but there to misinform you. Yes, <laughs> it can be there to undo what God already has put in you. That's why Paul warns them about false teachers. Yes, why? Because his main assignment was to teach them. So the danger was not prophecy because he was not in the prophetic like thoroughly. The danger was teaching. And then he warns them about false teachers. So that they cannot come and undo what he had planted in them. That's why he comes back and says, am I not an apostle unto you? Yes, he comes back and says, you might have thousand guardians, but you have one father because I begat you yes. through the gospel of Jesus. Oh, yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, he says, if, if any man comes and teaches something that is different <laughs> from what we are teaching, I will give you straight from its actual translation. He says, even an angel it doesn't matter. Let that person be stoned. Mm. Amen. If it is different from what we are preaching, that's what Paul said. Such boldness. He says, even an angel. <laughs> so today, somebody say, mathematics of grace. Mathematics of grace. So where is uh, this message taking us, like I said? It's taking us to the scandal of grace. So before I tell you and I talk to you about what is scandalous about grace, I need to take you through the mathematics of grace. So today I'm not talking about what grace is. I'm talking about what grace does. I think, I think, I think if you have been following our teachings, this is easy for you. Because there is a difference. Oh, yes. And we'll put it right in front of you. Mm. Oh, yes. Say, let's flow, Apostle. Yes. Let's flow, Apostle. So I want us to quickly go to the book of John chapter 1, verse 17. Hallelujah. You can't talk about grace and not talk about the one who brought grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. You see, the Bible says, Satan, at that time was Lucifer, right? Which means the light bearer. But when Jesus comes, he says, I'm the light. <laughs> I'm not the light bearer. I'm the light. You see now? It makes him way better, far, compared to the devil. The devil was, listen, 
If somebody is a truth bearer, and I come and say I'm the truth. <laughs> Forget about it. We'll talk about it another day. <laughs> John 117. Do you guys have NIV by any chance? Okay. Well, let's do King James. John chapter 1, verse 17. Yes. For the law was given by Moses, uh -huh. but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for the law was given by who? Moses. Musa. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So we have the law here. Pay attention now. I'm taking you deeper Amen. so that I can take you higher. Grace, law. But these two did not just emerge out of nowhere. Somebody had to usher them. Moses, who happens to be Moses, ushered the law. Jesus, Joshua, ushered grace and truth. So we have Moses here and we have Jesus here. It is amazing that Jesus is not called the second Moses but rather the second Adam. You see, Moses was given by him or through him so to say. But when it comes to the issue of grace, Jesus now is the one that comes with grace. Say glory, somebody. Glory. But I want you to understand what Paul, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter 3. The law came by who? Moses. What about grace and truth? By Jesus. by Jesus. Don't forget that. So you remove Jesus, there is no grace. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> it will make sense in a while. You remove Moses, there is no law. Amen. So you can't accept the law and not accept Moses. That's why Jesus had a problem, or rather, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the Sadducees, they had a problem with Jesus. And they would say, according to the law of Moses, because they understood that you cannot accept the law and not accept the one who came with the law. That's why through the entire Bible, we see the uh, Mosaic law, you know, being used in almost every book of the Bible. Mm. Except the book of Job, of course. Because Job lived before the law, before Moses, right? Mm. And we see how people will uh, treat the law with reverence. Mm. And they will always connect the law to Moses. Mm -hmm. Meaning without Moses, there is no law. Mm. That's why the Bible says the law came through Moses. Mm -hmm. But grace and truth. Please, this is important for where we are going next week. Mm. Don't forget that. Yes, I said what? Second Corinthians chapter 3. Yes, sir. My time is up. Verse what? Verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament? Mm -hmm. Not of the letter, mm -hmm. but of the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. I'll read that once again. I think I'm ministering to you today here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey. Who have also made us able. Oh, yeah. uh, Pastor Brian, it does not say capable oh, ministers. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says able ministers hey. of the New Testament. Mm. Not of the letter, yes, sir. but of the spirit. Yes, sir. For the letter killeth. Which is the law. Yes, sir. Here he says the law killeth. Mm -hmm. But the spirit giveth life. Mm -hmm. And here when you talk about the letter, you're talking about the law. Yes, sir. When you're talking about the spirit, you're talking about grace. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
You see, Paul understood what he was talking about here. He, you see, a lot of people will quote this, not really understanding what Paul is saying. When Paul said the letter killed, Uh, you are getting it. And when he said the spirit which is God, it's hearing me. Ah, the rest you better read your Bibles. <laughs> oh my. Asa changed the name. She reminds me of Jacob. Who was known to be Jacob, the next thing she was, he was Israel. Now Asa is now Tebit. I'm telling you now. <laughs> the book of Exodus, it will make sense. Remember, this message is ushering the scandal of grace. So please don't forget that. Exodus, chapter 32. Isn't it what we read? It says, the letter killeth. Yes, sir. But the spirit gives life. Yes, sir. The law killeth. Yes, sir. But grace gives life. Yes, sir. So now I want us to quickly do Exodus. Chapter 32. And I will read verse 28. Say, bring it on, Apostle. Bring it on, Apostle. Verse 28 reads. And the children of Levi, these are Levites, did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Now, most of you might not understand where this is coming from. But when you read from verses 15, yes, sir. remember Exodus, somebody say, work it out, Apostle. Work it out, Apostle. I don't want to preach like I was there when it was written. I will do that next week. But you people, you are pushing me. Exodus 32, Moses is coming down. Remember he was in the mountain. Yes, sir. This is where he was given the stony tablets. Mm. This is where he was given what? The law. Yes, sir. So he comes down. He, we know the story. They they'd already created a, a calf. Remember the story? And then he comes down with the law for the first time. So the first time the law was introduced, 3,000 men died. So when Paul says, the letter killeth, it's because the day the law was introduced, men died. Are they getting it? Yes, sir. But he says, grace, the spirit, gives life. Yes, sir. Acts 2, verse 41. Scripture interprets scripture. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, we have nothing better to offer you than the word here. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. So if you hate flipping around the pages of the Bible, start loving it, please. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. Acts 2, verse 41. Can I, can I read? Amen. Verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Yes, and the same day, does it say the same month? The same same day. Day. Does it say the same year? Same day. Does it say the same year? Same, day. same week? Same day. It says, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So when Paul said, the spirit gives life and the letter which is the law killeth, this is what he's talking about. That when the law was introduced, men died. But when grace now came, men received eternal life. So the spirit gives life. While is the, the, the law takes it. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Don't mess with grace. Mm -hmm. 
Because grace is your only saving grace. Yes, so don't play with grace. Mm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So every time grace is introduced, yes, sir. something extraordinary takes place. Oh, yeah. mm. Every time grace is introduced, mm -hmm. something abnormal takes place. Yes, sir. Mm. You see, when it comes to grace, one plus one is not two. Say, what are you saying, Apostle? What are you saying, Apostle? Because some of you, you know me to make sense when I preach. But right now, you are like some of you. What is he saying today? <laughs> the book of Luke. Luke chapter 15. It's a long story, but um, I'll read. Anigo shatala brandi akura shatala. Then drew near unto him all the publicans. That is verse one. Kinamu tota maka verse one. And sinners for to hear him. Of course, the Bible there him is talking about Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured. Saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having hundred sheep, I'll read it like I'm reading New King James. Mm -hmm. What man of you, having hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, will leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it. And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, let's break down what we just dealt with. 99 sheep, or sheep, so to say, right? 99 sheep. They are with the shepherd. Amen. But one naughty, one sheep, one naughty sheep mm -hmm. decides to take its own way. Yes. And as a result, the sheep is lost. Yes, sir. And the shepherd leaves. You need to check the context. Mm. The 99 in the wilderness come yes, on, church. Hey. It does not say at home. It does not say with another shepherd. Mm. He's risking the 99 for one. Hey. Ah, yeah. hey. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He goes to look for that one sheep mm. and leaving the 99. Mm. The reason why Jesus asked them this question said, what men of you, who among you mm. will leave 99 for one? Is because none of them could have said I. Mm -hmm. And that is because mathematically oh, yeah. that does not make sense. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey. Are you getting it now? Oh, yeah. So mathematically that does not make sense. Mm. You can't sacrifice 99 sheep for one sheep. Mm. I don't think the church is hearing me. So this is grace at work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One thing about grace, mm. what we see here is grace, nothing else. Mm. Yes. Mm. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, grace does not add up, mm -hmm. and it is not supposed to. Mm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why it's grace. Mm. Let me say that. I think that was powerful. Oh, yeah. yes. Grace 
does not add up. And is not supposed to. Yes, sir. That's why it's grace. Because if it made sense, it would have ceased from being grace. Yes, sir. So we call it grace because it doesn't make sense. That's why the Bible says he will call the unwise. Just to make a fool of those who are claiming to be wise. Yes, Some of us, if it was by qualifications, will not be ministering to God's people today. Yes, if it was about how articulate, uh, how, how, how well spoken one is, mm-hmm. how one can articulate words, mm-hmm. how one can structure words, yes, how learned one is, yes, some of us will not have qualified. But what grace did, grace said, I see all of them with all the qualifications. But I need that one. (laughs) One thing about grace is when grace gets a hold of you, grace also capacitates you. Aya. Aya. That's why you should never underestimate grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And once you know it is by grace, mm. it is not by works, yes, you will see how powerful grace is. Mm. You see, when you go to work, even though you know that you qualify, mm-hmm. once you take it as it's grace, mm-hmm. grace starts doing the work. Amen. You are not hearing what I'm saying. I wish somebody could hear me. Can I talk to two people right there? Because grace capacitates only those who recognize it. Because grace knows that you don't deserve him. But if you act like you deserve him, he will be there as if he's not there. That's why the only time we read and we heard God say, my grace is sufficient is because Paul looked at what he was given. I'm talking about the assignment right here, right? What was ahead of him? And he looked at himself and he said, no ways. I don't qualify. I can't do this no more. But as long as he continued as if he could handle it, God will never have said, my grace is sufficient. So grace is demonstrated when one says, I, I cannot do this. I don't know if that makes sense to somebody. So grace capacitates us when we accept that we can do it. I don't know if that makes sense. Thank God for grace. And on top of that, thank God for the mathematics of grace. Because what makes sense to you it's not what makes sense to God. Amen. Let me show you that in the scripture, the book of Matthew 20. Next week when we deal with the scandal of grace, hey, we are, go- we are going to dismantle some few things. Because there we are dealing with the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, sir. This is the gospel of the cross. Hey. Then the gospel of grace. Ah, I can't sit down on that one. Yes, no, 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 ah, no, 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 no. Ah, 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 it's like fire. Yes, sir. You can't. Ah, ah, you can't. Ah, jiri basaya. You can't. Malida hasotakiva. He said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The book of Matthew chapter 20. This story is very long. I'm just going to read. Let's see how it goes. From verse 1. I told you, Kingdom of verse 1. Oh, yeah. So today I'm moving only with verse 1. Yes. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. Mm-hmm. Now the kingdom of heaven is likened to a landowner. Mm-hmm. Do you see that? 
Yes, sir. Pay attention now. Who went out early in the morning to hire some workers for his vineyard? Right? He agreed to pay them a, de a denarius. Right? For the day. So you work, I give you a denarius. For what? For the day. And send them into what? His vineyard. Verse 3. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard. I will pay you whatever is right. Do you see the difference now? Yes, sir. Yes, you need to pay attention to yes, those sir. that he started with. The boss says, early in the morning. It's very important for you to pay attention to that, right? He says, he promised or he agreed to pay them a denarius. Mm. But to these ones, he says, because now it's about nine o'clock, mm -hmm. right? So they didn't come to work at the same time. So to these ones, he's saying, I will pay you whatever is right. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how much he's going to pay them. Mm -hmm. Whatever is right. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Yes, sir. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon. If you notice... The time here is actually divided into watches. Mm. 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 If you notice, if you know the eight watches that we have, the prayer watches, that's how the biblical time works. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes ma'am. Mm. That's why you hardly find 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Mm. You only find 12, 9, 6. Mm. You, you get the point? Yes, sir. In most cases you'll find the prayer watches. Mm -hmm. That's why it moves from nine to noon. Yes, sir. From noon to three. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. All these are watches. Mm -hmm. But these are watches of the day. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's move. Because I'm not talking about that. So this one, he found them at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And did the same thing. Then he says about five. Do you see now? Yes, sir. He went out and found some who are still standing around. Mm -hmm. He asked them, why are you not working? Doing nothing. He says, because no one heard us. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Mm -hmm. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages. Mm -hmm. Starting or beginning with the last ones. Ah, what is happening right now? Are we not supposed to pay the ones who came early in the morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because these ones are exhausted. Mm -hmm. These ones are tired. Yes, sir. These ones have been toiling. These ones have been laboring. Mm -hmm. So if there is somebody that I need to pay as quick as possible, yes, sir. it's this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe Uncle Peter got it. Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting it as well? Mm -hmm. He says, starts, begin with the ones that came. Yes, sir. Ayah. Mm -hmm. Last. Right? Mm -hmm. He says, then verse 9, the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon <laughs> came and each received a denarius. Uh -uh, what is happening now? So when those came, those came who were hired first, so when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. I mean, if somebody came at 5, yes, sir. I came at 6 a.m. Mm. This one came at 5 p.m. Mm. doing the same job that I'm doing. Yes, sir. I'm supposed to get more. So there is nothing wrong with them expecting more. Yes, sir. But each one of them also received a what? A denarius. Mm -hmm. When they received it, they began to grumble. Mm -hmm. They murmured against the landowner, saying, hey, these who were hired last, mm -hmm. right? Watch this now. Worked only one hour, mm -hmm. they said. And you have made them equal to us mm -hmm. who have been here since morning. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it says, who have borne the burden of the work yes, and the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. This is powerful. I'm closing here. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? <laughs> Remember where we started. Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was Hired last the same as I give you. Mm -hmm. Don't I have the right? Yes, this is where grace comes in. Hey. 
to do what I want with my own money. Don't I have a right to do what I want to do with my own grace? That's why nobody can put a price on grace. Nobody can tell God where his grace is supposed to go. That's why you should never judge people. You should never make yourself a deputy God. Where you sit around choosing and talking about who deserves grace and who does not deserve grace. As if you were not saved by the same grace. We don't own grace. Grace owns us. Are we together? That's why you should humble yourself. Just because some of your things that you are doing, nobody knows about them. It does not make you holier than others. You should humble yourself. Because one way or the other, we are all jacked up and messed up. Otherwise, Jesus would not have died for us. Jesus said, he who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. Guess what? People don't understand. Say Revelezai Apostle. Say Revelezai Apostle. You know when you say Revelezai, we are about to take it deeper. So remember, they caught this woman in an act. She was not busy planning it. She was caught in an act. <laughs> I wish I could go deeper. She was caught right-handed in an act. They brought her just as she was. Yes, sir. You know, the devil thinks he's clever. Mm. But he's not clever at all. Because if really their intentions were pure, they will have brought the men as well. Yes, sir. Because nobody commits adultery by themselves. But rather the Bible says, and they brought the woman. And this shows you their intentions. Amen. Are you getting the revelation? Oh, yes. They brought it to Jesus mm -hmm. and said, according to the law of Moses, mm -hmm. this woman is supposed to be stoned. Yes, sir. But you and I, we read John 1, 17. Mm -hmm. Law came through Moses, yes, sir. Yes, sir. but grace and truth hey. came through Jesus. Yes, sir. So they brought the woman mm -hmm. using the law. But they did not understand that they brought the woman to grace. And the letter killeth. Hence they wanted to stone her. Yes, sir. But grace gives life. So they brought her in the name of the law. And according to the law. But they did not understand that they had brought that woman to grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because without Jesus, there is no grace. Mm. Jesus is the grace of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He who knew no sin mm. became sin for us. Mm. So that we can become the righteousness of God. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And the Bible declares that they took stones. Mm. And Jesus said these words. He who is without sin, mm. let him cast let him throw yes, the first stone. Mm -hmm. That's not where the miracle was. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible continues to say, and he bent down. Mm -hmm. And he began to write with his finger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was not writing with a stick. Mm -hmm. He was writing with his finger. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. He was not writing with his stick. Say Revelezai. He was writing with his finger. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, and they threw the stones down. And they began to live one by one. Listen, they did not subscribe to Jesus being who he claimed to be. That did not matter to them. Because even when Jesus forgave sinners, they had a problem with it. So they did not obey the word, he who is without sin. Let him cast the first stone. These people were brutal. In the times of Stephan, they stoned Stephan while he is looking, saying, behold, I see a vision. The heavens are open. Mm -hmm. I see the Son of God mm -hmm. standing up by the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. They did not care. Mm -hmm. They continued to kill him. Mm -hmm. So if you think the miracle was in who is without, he who, 
He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. You are mistaken. Mm. The miracle was in the writing. Oh, yeah. hey, hey. So when he bent and he began to write, mm. remember, these were followers mm. of the law. Mm. These were people who observed mm. the law. Yes, sir. Meaning they understood the tablets. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, are we together? Yes, sir. And not just did they understand the tablets, mm. They knew the handwriting oh, yeah. that was on the tablets. Yeah. Remember, Moses did not write the law. Yes, sir. Moses was given the law. Yes, sir. But the law was given to Moses while it's already it was written. Yes, so somebody wrote the law yes, sir. Yes, sir. in a stony tablet. Yes, sir. But years later, mm. he does not have to write it on a stone. Yes, so as he bent down and he began to write, because they knew the law. They realized that the handwriting yes, is the same one that wrote the law. They said we'll be making a big mistake. Hey. Grace has power. Yes, sir. Because, oh my goodness, they're not hearing me. No, they're not hearing me. I'm afraid because I'm, 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 I'm not yet there because next week we are going to the scandal of grace. If you can't hear me here, you, you are in trouble. So mathematically, the story of this woman does not make sense. Mm -hmm. She was caught in an act. Yes, sir. And that was before New Testament. Mm -hmm. That was before Jesus died. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. Because Jesus preached under the law. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, I'm not here to demolish the law. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to perfect it. Yes, I'm here to complete yes, it. Yes, but he had not yet completed it. Mm -hmm. Because his blood was not yet shed. Yes, he had not yet resurrected. He was not yet Christ. Mm. That's why it says, if any man be in Christ, yes, he was still Jesus here. Mm. Are we together? Yes, sir. But what caused him now to be able to cause these people to take back their words mm. and to forget about whatever they were about to do mm. is because now it was grace versus law. Yes, sir. Because the, the law says she's caught in an act. Mm -hmm. And we all know that if anybody does something wrong, they deserve to be punished. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Parents will understand that better. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. But then again, when grace came, says, yes, we agree 100%. We know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody said the mathematics of grace. The mathematics of grace. When you do one plus one, when it comes to grace, you don't get two. Mm -hmm. You get 109. And you try to put it together. How does the nine enter? It doesn't make sense. It does not have to make sense. Hence, it's grace. Somebody holler, thank God for the mathematics of grace. Thank God for the mathematics of grace. Believe it or not, the future of the true church of God depends on grace. Let me say it again. The future of the true church of God depends on grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But as long as the church leaves like they deserve the grace, mm. we are shutting the door. Yes, sir. Mm. Hey. Mm. Hey. Hallelujah. Praise Praise the Lord. Because once we accept the grace of God in a sense of we live knowing we are what we are by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's why we don't maximize our potential here. We can't maximize our potential when Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You see, when that becomes our language, people begin to receive God's grace. Mm -hmm. The reason why they don't receive it is because we are self-centered. Mm -hmm. We call it grace, but the truth of the matter is self-righteousness. Yet our righteousness are like 50 wrecks before God. Are we together? Once we accept grace and leave to testify that it is by grace, then God's grace will now show those people mercy. In a sense of they will see grace in us and they will feel God can also forgive me. Are we together? Yes. 
So God's grace is showing them mercy before they receive grace. And that is because us who have received the grace, we come and say, it's not us. It's grace. So the same grace can help you. So let me hook you up. Does that make sense to you? But here's what is, what is important. And never forget this. According to what we read in the book of Matthew 20. God's grace is for the last. As much as it is for the first. You missed it, right? Remember, they came first. You, you forgot already. You, you, you forgot already. You, you, you remember. Remember, they came first for a denarius. And there are those who came at nine. Those who came at uh, noon, yes, sir. at 3 o'clock, yes, sir. at 5 o'clock, mm. these were the last ones. Yes, sir. But when now they... Ah, I picked up something. Oh, come on, hey. Please write this one down. Mm -mm. This one, I'm trying to find a way of putting it in, in the back of my mind. Mm. I'm trying to... Hmm... I, I, I don't know if you can put it here. God's grace does not make economic sense. Because if you are going to pay me per hour, and somebody comes and works one hour, and you pay me the same amount that I worked 12 hours, yes, sir. It does not make economic sense. Mm, 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 mm. I, I don't know if... Yes, sir. If you have people who work for you, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. It doesn't make sense, isn't it? Mm. That's how powerful God's grace is. Mm -hmm. So it is not limited to anything, even financially. Mm. So you good. might feel like you don't have enough. Mm. So Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So but in that area, you can see God's grace. That all your needs will be met. So. All your needs will be supplied. So. And you say, but how come I'm able to do this? Amen. When you calculate yourself, you don't even know how. Amen. When you say, but this and this and you add up, it does not make sense. What you will come up with, this is the mathematics of grace. Yes, sir. Haya. Hey. Haya. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here we see all of them receiving the same amount. You see, grace from, or what we see here, from human uh, point of view or standpoint, it doesn't end up. Like, add up. When we look at it ourselves, that's what the grace of God does. You add it up, it doesn't come with what you have, you have expected. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at men who found grace. It did not add up. Men like Paul, it did not add up. That when Ananias was told, go and minister to Paul, he said, that guy is a medara. And God said, no, he's no longer a medara. What time? Grace. Hallelujah. What time? Grace. You see, what, what, what was to take therapist three years can take grace three minutes. Amen. Can I have amen here? Amen. Yes, sir. Once yes, sir. you open your hands and your heart for grace, yes, sir. grace rewrites your destiny. Yes. Somebody, you better allow God's grace. Oh, yes. You better allow, you better have a space and a place for God's grace. Yes, because once you cut a lampano grace, yes. everything about you becomes extraordinary. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As I close. One thing about grace. Please write this one down. This is the mathematics of grace. Mm -hmm. And based on what we read, I'm seeing something here. Mm -hmm. From Luke 15 and Matthew 20. And the story of this woman in the book of John who was caught in an act of adultery. I believe it's John 8. Now, what I've seen now, please write this down. 
is that grace, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a better way to put it, embraces sinners. Mm. Hey. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. The same grace that saved somebody who has been saved for 50 years will be the same grace that will embrace a sinner and the sinner will feel loved. Mm. Yet you have been saved for 15 years mm. and the same measure of love will go to that sinner. Mm. Grace mm. embraces sinners. Mm. 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 Yes, sir. Number two, grace transforms sinners. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number three, grace liberates sinners. Yes, sir. Number four, grace helps Sinners. You caught it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Last scripture. And we share grace. Amen. Ephesians 2 8. Remember, it's a foundation. So if you are tuning in for the first time, right? Please don't miss next week. Yes, sir. We have a lot of people that follow, you know, and are connected. They know. So don't miss next week. This is a strong foundation that when I minister on the scandal of grace, you'll be like, huh? This makes sense what Apostle was talking about. Yes, Here we talk about what grace does. Mm -hmm. Next week we talk about what is grace. Ah. Amen. So when we talk about what grace is, it takes another turn. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Please read for me, if you have it. Yep. 2.8, I think. I said 2.8. For the grace are ye saved, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So what is grace? Grace is a gift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. You don't work for a gift. Yes, sir. As long as you're working for it, it's not a gift. Yes, sir. It's a salary. Mm. Mm. It's a wage. Mm. Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. A gift, you don't work for it. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus was a gift. And Peter preached in Acts 2 and said, repent and receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, so the Holy Ghost is a gift. God's grace is a gift. What verse does I say you must read so I look for it? Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. So if I was to define grace in a way that you'll never forget, mm. the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. Mm. So faith here plays a very important role. Mm. Faith becomes the bridge that connects us to grace, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But if I was to define grace in a way that you'll never forget until Jesus comes, mm. grace is a rope that God uses to hold on to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. While his faith is a rope we use to hold on to God. Hey. 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 Mm. Mm. Ah, I think Aphrodite, she, she heard me. Ah, Aphrodite, she had Apostle. She's working, but she's feeling it. Musa Maluleke. Maluleka, I think you are hearing me there. Hey. Tebet, you are hearing Apostle. Who else is hearing Apostle here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Sepo is hearing Apostle. Sandra is hearing Apostle. Lydia is hearing Apostle. Ah, Sister Wandisa. The one and only Wandisa. The one and only Wandisa Chesane. Even uh, we have Saba Waters. I thought I had spoken in tongues there. When I said Saba Waters. He's, he, that's his name there. Vanessa is also getting it. Right? Vanessa is, is, is getting it. M, we have also uh, Emmy there getting it. Amen. Buitumelo is getting it as well. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because God does not need grace from us. Mm. But God needs faith from us. Yes, sir. Hey. We don't need faith from God. In a sense, we need grace. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because faith is something that comes from us mm. when we hear his word. Yes, sir. God does not give faith. Mm. He gives his word. Yes, 
And by believing in that word, faith is born. So now faith helps me to hold on to God. While his grace helps God to hold on. Or rather causes God to hold on. So God will never let go until I let go of faith. I, I hope you got it, right? So it is never God who lets go. That's why in Luke 15, soon after that, we are introduced to a woman who lost a penny, right? We are then introduced to the parable of the, 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 the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son. That's why in the Bible, you don't have prodigal fathers, you have prodigal son. Yes, sir. God was simply saying to us there, him as a father, he will never change his mind towards you. Whether you live or you remain. If you leave, he won't stop you. When you come back, his arms will be open. Yes, sir. So God was saying, I will never let go of you. Mm. Say amen. amen. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You see, what I'm about to say here now might offend other people. What I'm about to say might what? Offend other people. But this is the truth. What I'm about to say might offend other people. Say, say it, Apostle. Say it, Apostle. Apostle Paul is not the one who brought grace, but a man who found grace. We call Paul the apostle of grace. Yes, sir. The man of grace. Yes, sir. But the truth of the matter is, Paul is not the one who came with grace. Yes, sir. He's not the one who brought grace. Mm -hmm. We teach as if Paul brought grace. Mm -hmm. John 1.17 says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Yes, sir. So Paul did not bring grace. Mm -hmm. But Paul found grace. Yes, sir. And the same grace that Paul found mm. is the same grace that we are saved by. Mm. Which God wants us to be able to minister to others mm. about the very same grace. Mm. I've seen how scholars, especially those of New Testament, mm. will glorify and aware Paul as if Paul had grace. Paul himself said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. That's why every time I stand in front of you, every Sunday, every Wednesday, I usually say, Apostle Mies is not the healer. Yes, sir. Jesus is. Yes, sir. And it is not that you do not know that. Mm. It is because <clears throat> I don't want to be in a position where one fell into a trap mm. Mm. of idolizing a human being. Yes, sir. And I was not able to prevent it from happening. Because some can fall into that trap not because they wanted to, but because they are immature. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll hear some says, we are of Apollos. Mm. Mm. Others says, we are of this. One plants, one waters. Belevarinos <laughs> katakavai. I'm excited about next week, Wednesday. I believe part one of the mathematics of grace has prepared you already for what is coming. What is coming, brothers and sisters, is the scandal of grace. We will deal with what's scandalous about grace. Oh, yeah. that is so. That is so. You and I will unpack it mm -hmm. scripture after scripture. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, it will be another revelatory experience in the Holy oh, Ghost. Yeah. Oh, yes. And your life shall never be the same again. That is so. That's why in your prayer you should never forget grace. Oh, yes. In your prayer you should never forget grace. Yes, sir. When you finish your prayer, thank you. For grace. Amen. Grace that you are talking to him. And that he is listening. Mm -hmm. That is grace. Oh, 
Hallelujah. More than anything, get understanding. The days are dark. The days are evil. The ends of the world are upon us. If you do not know the truth, you will not be free. I told you truth does not set anybody free. The Bible never said that. The Bible says, you shall know the truth. Meaning the truth you know is the one that sets you free. So if you don't know truth, you won't be free. Even if you can hear about it. Until you know it, you won't be free. Pray for discernment. I've seen a lot of people doing a whole lot of wrong things when it comes to discernment. Discernment comes one way. There is only one way you can unlock your discernment. And that is in Hebrews chapter 4. And you read verse 12 when you get home. You will be shocked. That is the only key to unlock discernment in every believer. Hebrews 4, 12. When you get home, read it. Pray for that. Don't judge men by how they dress. It's funny how you find men, women of God, having time to tell their church members who's true and who's not, who's genuine and who's not. You can't judge a man by their clothes. God does not look. He said to Samuel, I don't look at the outside appearance. I look at the heart. So discernment, just because you don't click with somebody because of how they dress, it doesn't make them false. Because there are so many wolves in a sheep skin. Praise the Lord, everybody. Or cloth, so to say. They, 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 they package themselves well. And because you are judging somebody with your naked eye, you can't see beyond the veil of the flesh. You are missing a man who God has sent to deliver you because you are not using the spirit to descend. You are using what appeals to your eye. Hallelujah. In the season that we are in, run away from any man of God who preaches other men of God who doesn't preach the word of life. I mean, if my duty is to preach the word and I'm loaded with the word and God has put me here to preach the word to you, how does it benefit you if I start talking about a preacher in USA that I've never met. I'm seeing him on social media. Without social media, I would not even have known about that preacher. And you stand there saying, yeah, my man of God is a true man. He's the only true man of God. The day I stand in front of you and I say I'm the only true man of God, run away and don't look back. The day I come here and say I'm the only true man of God, run away. The day I stand here and start preaching men of God, take me to the mountain, tie me around a tree, pour anointing oil until I come back to my senses. Amen. Something will have tempered with my senses. Yes, we are men, we are women of the word. Yes, Give us the word. We talk the word. Amen. We live the word. We walk the word. Amen. We eat the word. Yes, we are men and women of prayer. Amen. We don't gossip. We don't slander. Amen. All our words are spent in prayer. When it comes to us, it's prayer or nothing. Amen. We understand that prayer is a necessity for survival. Amen. That's who we are. Mm. We, pray and we pray until prayer starts praying through us. Mm. If you find us pray, you'll be glad that you found us. Amen. I'll be seeing everybody on Sunday. This coming Sunday, we have, <clears throat> sorry, we have our Sunday of Extreme Prophecies. Oh, yes. God still speaks yes, and we are going to hear him. That is so. We hear him through his word. We hear him in dreams. We are not led by dreams, we are led by the spirit. But we hear him in dream and the spirit gives us interpretation. And we hear him for ourselves. 
My sheep knows my voice. We hear him for ourselves. Yes. And on top of that, he uses his servant apostle Mism, so we're getting great. Oh, yeah. Just in case you miss him, he will talk to you through his servant. Yes. So I'm excited. It's also dubbed family deliverance. Oh, yeah. So wherever you are in the world, if you're in South Africa, stop joking. Amen. Make your way to new life this Sunday. Oh, yes. This Sunday, we had people traveling from different provinces this past Sunday. Yes, Some came from far. Yes, in all the provinces, we even have people came in, coming from different countries. Zambia, yes, we have people coming from Namibia. Amen. We have people coming from other countries. Yes, and you, you are there in the corner, you're like, hey, it's far. No, 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 no. Get serious. Yes, sir. Get serious. Fight whatever fights you. And yes, be in the sir. sanctuary this Sunday. Yes, sir. I'm excited to announce that our school of ministry is starting tomorrow. That is the online, online international school of seers and dreamers. You can still register even today. If I was you, I was going to pull all the strings and make sure I'm registered. Not for this, don't, they, you know what we are teaching in the church? When we get there, it's serious stuff. And for the first time, we are doing School of Seers and Dreamers. For the first time. For the first time. For the first time. We have a lot of people that have registered. But space is still there for you. Hallelujah. It will bring joy to me to see you there. Sign up. Hallelujah. Register. And if you are not yet a partner, this is your opportunity to partner with the work of God. Partner with this great ministry. I'm also excited to announce that our Migdash is coming on the 30th, 31st, and the 1st of June. So it will, be, it will be 30th, 31st of May, and then the 1st of June. And on the last day, we are releasing a prophetic word for the month of June. So our Migdash, which happens to be our praise is a moment where we give Towards the work of God. Oh, yes. Listen, this one, everybody's excited about it. Oh, yes. Because of how it is also done. Mm-hmm. So we only have this two times a year. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. If you have been praying, God help me, bless me, I will, I will be a blessing. Bless me, I will build you a house. God has created an opportunity. Yes, sir. Don't scatter. Amen. Don't disappear. Yes, sir. Don't vanish. Yes, sir. Here is the right time for you to show your faith. Hallelujah. Say, God, I'm not just an eater. I'm a sower. He gives bread to what? And then he gives seed to who? You know the story. Glory be to God. I'm not just an eater. So our Migdash, which is our praise of Lord, this is where we are giving towards the work of God. So if you have followed our ministry, you will know that we travel nations, right? And in, 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 in a year, we can be in like five different countries. We can be in five different places ministering the gospel of Jesus. And in this winter, we are busy. I'm sure you have seen pictures where we're giving blankets, we're giving clothes and, you know, you know, basic things that people need. Some of them, I can't talk about them right here, but you, you could have seen the pictures. Even this past Sunday, yes, sir. I'm talking, we didn't post pictures, but this past Sunday, people were receiving groceries, you know, you name it. And that is done under Adopt a Life, which is an arm of the church, which is a charity uh, organization that is part of the church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Then we have Ten Creative Foundation, which now goes out and Adopt a Life deals with the people in the church. We heard that there are people who lost their houses, their shacks because of fire. As a church, we went there and we started pledging. We made promises. And I pray that when this comes, you will be there to partake. Amen. I've seen it happen. We built the church, the sanctuary where we are in two months. Yes, because we had you saying, Apostle, when it comes to the work of God, we know what God has put in you. Yes, and we know you're not building yourself a mansion, you're building God's house. Yes, so we are here, Apostle. Money with a mission. Hallelujah. Money with a mission. That when God blesses me with billions, he will know I'll put him first. So don't miss it for anything. So 
I love you all with the love of God. And make sure that you register today for the school of seers and dreamers. Amen. I see a lot of people here that have registered. Well, Sister Tamari, Ntati, you name them. I'm seeing a lot of people here who have registered. And I can't wait to see you there. Amen. I love you with the love of God. Amen. Stay connected. Amen. And if you want to be an online member of this ministry, visit www.mizimzwake10credit.org and become an online member. You'll attend a class, and from there, it's a new chapter altogether. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. So I believe we have platforms that you can always screenshot right now and use those platforms to give and to offer for this specific service. Amen. Just go ahead and honor God with your substance. Amen. This Apostle Mies and Zwakitin Kredi signing out. And of course saying, God bless everybody. God bless everybody. And good night.